So how you doing? Hey, today we're gonna work on another one of my big home lights. Uh, this particular one is a 902 and it found a new home. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna work on making sure this saw is a good runner. And I basically tore through it and you know, I'm just gonna go through it and fix all the issues on it and you know, work it, making it a good runner for the new home. Uh, we'll take you all the way through, probably in two videos about the repairs and you know, the test cuts and everything, uh, unless we run into issues. So there will be a couple of videos on this saw before it gets sent out, but let me show you where she looks right now. Alrighty. So there she is, 902. You see, I got this side off, we got the carb off. All this stuff is off. I'm getting it ready to put back together now. Uh, she's gonna get a new fuel line. Fuel cap's gonna get a new duckbill valve. Uh, she's got a new fuel filter and all that stuff. She was missing a clutch assembly, so I'm gonna have to grab one of my clutches here and put on it. Uh, she was missing a muffler, so I got a muffler gathered up to put on it. Uh, the carburetor that was on it, I'm just gonna put a kit in it and everything, but I noticed the uh, intake block here has a crack here at the bolts, which is very common. So I'll have to put another one of these on it. And then, uh, over here, the flywheel that was on it had all the fins busted off. And I mean, the, the bolts were loose and everything. So I think somebody pulled the original flywheel off and changed it out and just kind of, you know, finger tightened the bolts. But I have another flywheel ready to get on it. Um, she was also missing this plate, which, you know, forever the cut, forever the points. So I'll end up, you know, putting another one of those on and everything. But, you know, just a bunch of little things should be able to get this thing up and running. Um, I'm going to try to get the points working again. I think just the filing will take care of it. Usually does. And then, uh, you know, if she doesn't bring back the spark, then I'll work at putting a chip in it or changing the whole system out or something. But I'll get a spark in it. Um, no, I'm not going to do any of that work, though, until I put a new seal in it. I'm going to put new seals in both sides of this before I even put it together just to make sure they're good as well. So yeah, we're gonna bring an old saw back to life all the way through test cutting and then ship it out to a new home. So let's get on with it. All right, a little update on where we are here. Uh, points I had to file down. Sandpaper wasn't enough. I had to use um, a file. You see points, sometimes sandpaper isn't enough. Um, See, the, the two contacts, when they come together, a lot of times is they burn a hole, like right smack in the center. And you got to remove a little bit more material in order to get them to work. So you got to use a file to get in there. And that's what I had to do. So I got them filed down. We got fantastic spark now. Flywheel is all changed out. New seal and everything on this side. Uh, over here. Muffler's on, clutch is on. I got a spark plug in it, but I'm gonna have to pull the clutch back off and all this stuff because I still have to put the seal in. Um, I just, I kind of got to this point, you know, it's late at night and I forgot all about putting that seal in. So tomorrow is what, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pull this clutch back off, pull everything out, put a new seal in there and then put her back together. And then uh, after that, it's just fuel system. So, you know, you need compression, you need spark, and you need fuel. I know I got the compression, and I know I got spark. So all that's left now is the fuel system. We're talking, uh, I'll need to put a new fuel line grommet in here, run the fuel line up through to the carburetor, get the carburetor kit put in, in and uh, you know, new fuel filter and everything. But uh, that's where we're at right now. Um, I do have a filling spike for it that I'm going to put on this. Uh, so, you know, we're getting there one step closer. Uh, you know, but I'm going to wait till tomorrow. It's late at night and I got to get to bed so I can go to work. Um, I forgot I got to change this in talk take block out as well. So, yeah, we're getting closer. And pretty soon we're going to get to see this thing running. So... I'll catch you tomorrow, but for you, it'll be a matter of seconds. Alrighty, later. Well, this is the next day, and 
I've been working on this 902 and I got her all back together. So let me flip this phone around and show you what she looks like. There she is. Looks a lot different now, doesn't it? I got a 24 inch bar on there. It's just an archer chain, nothing special, but she'll cut wood, you know. Uh, I moved some spelling spikes on there and you know, I should mention something here. As soon as I flip this around, I'm gonna mention something about them spikes. But yeah, there she is from that side. Let's give her a flip. All right, there she is from this side. All put back together. Look at them spikes. You know, just about every time I see a set of these spikes on a saw, they're upside down. People like to mount them with the points facing down. And it's actually wrong. You, you, you don't want them pointing down. You see, if you mount this upside down, your bottom points, you'll notice it more, are pointing downward. And what'll happen is when you're cutting the wood and you're trying to slide your wood along the spike, with them pointing down, it'll snag in the bark and you'll have trouble. You want them to catch when you're pulling up, not when you're pull, pushing down. So, you know, I see a lot of them that are on upside down. But there she is. I did a lot. Uh, let's let me go over the list of everything I've done. Now, you know I've been selling these saws, and I keep getting a, a lot of people who think my prices are too high. Well, let me explain some things here, and then you tell me if you think my prices are too high, or should this, or should I say, you tell me what you would charge. All right. So, the 902. Put some spikes on her. I put a new duckbill valve in the fuel cap and the oil cap. I went through the entire ignition system, fixed the points on it. So this is still running the points. I, I made the repairs to the point system. I didn't put a chip in it. I made the necessary repairs to get it up and functioning. I put a brand new pull rope on it. I had to locate another handle for it. The handle was missing. There was no rope or handle on this saw. Uh, I had to do a couple little tweaks to the uh, starter. The uh, I had to pull it apart and put some oil in there and stuff because she didn't want to work properly. Now, as you can see, I spent a good hour cleaning this thing. Uh, this is one of the flaws in the saw. One of the only flaws. Little crack there in the air lid which I don't even think that's original to the saw just from how much paint is missing on it compared to the rest, but it could be. Uh, I think it's older though. So let's take a look under the hood. I found a decent air filter for it. It's not brand new, but I mean, she could be. I mean, she's she's pretty close to, to new if, if you ask me. You know, if you're gonna buy a new air filter, you can easily spend $25, $30 just on that one thing. Now, uh, as far as the carb goes, I actually, this is this is not the carb that was on the saw. I had another one laying here that had a kit already put in it and I just never used it. So I just put that carb on here instead of rebuilding another one, you know what I mean? So this is just a different carburetor. Um, now I did block the governor circuit on this at the brass screw. This one does have the hole at the welch plug though. So it has the welch plug hole and I, I blocked the governor circuit at the brass plug on the side. Now I had to put a different intake block on it. It was cracked. So I had to locate one of those to put on her. Uh, carburetor seems to be functioning just fine. We got the spit filter all cleaned up and put back on. Oil pump is functioning perfectly. I had to locate a muffler for it. Um, this muffler has the screen in it. If the owner, if the new owner doesn't like that, you can pull the screen out, but I left it with the screen in it. These screws are not an exact match, so he'll want to keep a, a watch on those to make sure they don't start backing out. I got them on there pretty snug, so they should stay, but they're not an exact match, so just keep an eye on that. Um, I had to find a clutch to put on it. The sprocket is not brand new, it's, but it's very extremely lightly used. It doesn't really have any wear on it whatsoever. So, you know, we got a pretty, pretty good sprocket on there. I put new seals on both sides, you know, 
I mean, I really went through this saw with a fine tooth comb. We got all new fuel line, a fuel filter. I even flushed out the inside of the fuel tank. So, you know, you tell me, what would you charge to do all this work as well as selling the saw? And I've had some guys tell me that, just flat out tell me my price is too high. What do you think? What would you charge? I mean, I probably got, I mean, the cleaning alone is an hour worth of work. The tear down, doing all the necessary repairs, putting it back together is easily another three hours. So figure four, four or five hours worth of work on this saw, easily. Um, getting it to this condition and locating all the parts, you know, stealing parts off of other saws and stuff for, so forth to get it in this condition. So you tell me, what would you charge for a project like this? I've had guys tell, honestly, I've had guys tell me that $50 is what they sh I should be charging. Several of them, but I don't know. You tell me what you think. Uh, I think the saw is worth more than 50 bucks, don't you? So yeah, we got the 902 up and running and ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna try to give her a test run tomorrow. Make sure everything is functioning good. I'll try to give it two, maybe three test runs and you know, just make sure everything is running as it should be. Hopefully everything works out, but you know, with these old saws, it's not unusual to have an issue pop up. You know, I even after I went through all of this, the thing is really old. Things are gonna go wrong, you know? I mean, it, it's not gonna be perfect. There's gonna be something that happens somewhere. So, you know, you gotta be prepared for that. I even, even though I did all the work that I did to it, there's always the chance that a problem occurs. But what do you say? Uh, the next time you see this saw, we're gonna be testing it and giving it a try, see how she runs. Alrighty, catch you on the next one. Later. Later.